What up, my ninja? Hey, Joe, how was work today? Boy, I'll tell you. If only I could remember. Well, you went to Hawaii several days after the wildfire. How did that go? Oh, yeah, it was pretty hot. Yeah, no shit. Did you comfort the poor burn victims and give them financial aid? Yeah, totally. I gave them 700 big ones. Joe, doesn't that seem off? 700 per person doesn't feel like it'll help much at all. Ha, huh. listen to Obamacare over here. It's $700 per household. Dude, you've sent like 5 billion extra dollars to Ukraine by accident. You're not gonna help the people of my home state. What I didn't get is why all these people died from a wildfire when they live on an island surrounded by water. Like, just take a swim until there's no fire. Oh my fucking God. Sup, libtards? Hey, Donnie, join any prison gangs yet? No, the skinheads love me, but I'm not trying to do all that in an election year. I might need to go with the Hispanics. Are you sure you'll have their support? Are you kidding? They've already built a wall around my unit out of lunch trays and beds, and they paid for it. Well, did you let them know you're only going to be in there for like 20 minutes? And break all their hearts? No way. <laughs> I'll tell them on the way out. You just want to avoid a riot. That would be a change. Shut your mouth, Mr. Summer of Love. What are you guys talking about? Joe's in Hawaii. No, I'm actually home now. Oprah probably wanted you off her new island. Seriously, how long did you stay? Like six hours, I'm pooped. Sleepy, you didn't even spend a full workday there and you were falling asleep in your chair. Yeah, what is so important that you took forever to get there and only spent the better part of an afternoon? I was eating ice cream and watching old Animal Planet shows for the sweet nostalgia. So while people burned alive, you were watching Steve Irwin? Rest in peace to that legend. His kids are taking the mantle, though. Of course, I watched a ton of The Goat, but I also dipped into Big Cat Diaries, The Most Extreme, and River Monsters. All classics. Don't forget Pitbulls and Paroles. That shit was trash. It started that whole era where Animal Planet was doing shows that weren't even about animals, like that fucking ghost show. The Haunted was trash, and I agree they went too far with that type of content, but there was at least still dogs in pit bulls and paroles. What was your show of choice back then, Donnie? I was super into Animal Cops Houston. <laughs> Shut your Sarah McLaughlin head ass up. Fuck off, it was like cops, but they saved puppies. It was incredible. You guys are forgetting the best show of them all, Lost Tapes. I forgot about that one. This found footage horror show was not too bad. It was kind of mid, but wildly entertaining at the same time. I always love the topic of cryptids and mythical beasts. Sounds like a tier list to me. I'd be so down. Hold on, I'll get some ice cream. I say we only do American cryptids. Fine with me. Let's do it. Okay, first of all, I'll explain the tiers. We have S tier, they're out there, which is for cryptids that have so much evidence that their existence is all but confirmed. How would they be a cryptid if there's that much evidence? You'll see. Second, we have A tier, or the could easily be real tier. For this one, we may have some evidence or an explanation for the creature or the legend. After that is B tier, real but extinct, which is as it sounds. The animal in question once existed, but doesn't anymore. Like Donnie is president? You'll be extinct before you can serve another term. C tier is possible, but not supported by much in the ways of proof. Then D tier, which is the unlikely tier. Creatures in unlikely have little to no proof and more supporting their non-existence. Lastly, we have F tier or... Fake news! Yes, fake news. I think you can guess who came up with that one. This tier is pretty self-explanatory. Anything that sounds like it came from CNN is probably in here. All right, cool. What monster should we start with? Why don't we start with the quintessential cryptid? Garden gnome? Joe, those are lawn decorations. No chance, bro. I saw a few of them. They were hunting flamingos. You got to take your pills more consistently. I was talking about Bigfoot. Here we go. The classic useless debate. Now hold on, Donnie. Let's give Sasquatch a chance. Sightings have been happening since native tribes owned these lands. A chance? Sasquatch is 100% real. I've seen one myself. Not this shit again. Okay, where was it, Joe? It was at your house. Joe, if you're talking about my wife, I'm going to be livid. Nah, dude, it was like twice the height of you or your jacked wife. When was this? Had to be during Barack's time because I wasn't allowed to talk to it. Why am I not remembering this meeting with Bigfoot at my own house? Maybe you're having problems with memory and or cognition. It's important to see the early warning signs, bro Obama. So you saw a big hairy ape in Barack's house? Nah, it wasn't that hairy at all. It was actually bald on his head. Was he black? He was African-American, you fucking bigot. Wait, are you talking about Shaquille O'Neal right now? I didn't know Sasquatches had names. Joe, Shaq is not Bigfoot. 
How do you know? Have you seen him unshaved? This is irrelevant and racially insensitive. Do we believe in Bigfoot or not? Bigfoot is as real as the cone of chocolate chocolate chip in my hand right now. I haven't seen nearly enough evidence for me to say it's real. It's always people like Joe seeing some dude walking around in the woods and freaking the fuck out. There are definitely stories like that out there, but there has been some interesting, albeit inconclusive, evidence like footprint casts and short videos. This evidence comes from all over the country and even the world. There are so many fun names for the big guy like Sasquatch, Yowie, Yeti, and Skunk Ape, which is my new nickname for Donald because he smells like ass. Everybody always tells me how good I smell. Is there any piece of evidence you can point to for Bigfoot other than eyewitness idiots? Yeah, well, there's this video that's pretty interesting. Whoa, that's Shaquille O'Neal. Okay, well, that uh, does look pretty good, but the fact that it's always these types of videos where it's really far away or really blurry and can't be confirmed, I guarantee that most, if not all, Bigfoot evidence is staged. Nah, bro, the Sasquatch is extremely elusive and intelligent. You're not going to get any evidence unless it wants you to get it. That's such a weak argument. No animal, including humans, can avoid trail cameras, which are placed all over the United States by hunters. If it was out there, we would have got a picture by now. What about this one? Funny how it's always looking away in these pics. This is a great prank by a guy in a monkey suit and nothing more. What about the famous footage from Roger Patterson? Come on, bro, that's another dude in a suit. Well, that's not confirmed. A dude that made authentic suits admitted on his deathbed that he sold a realistic Bigfoot suit to Patterson. Um, okay, that doesn't help its case, but that dude could have been lying. So you believe a guy that says he saw and filmed Bigfoot rather than a man on his deathbed saying he sold a monkey suit to that guy, which he did for a living? Just because one piece of evidence is a hoax doesn't mean the legend isn't real. There are more sightings for Bigfoot than almost any other cryptid. The sheer volume of eyewitness accounts and offhanded evidence from all over the world should count for something, no? Nope. The truth is Bigfoot is a myth, and there are a bunch of people that are either mistaken in what they experienced or, like Patterson, wanted to cash in on other people's stupidity. Think of all the shows like Finding Bigfoot, where a bunch of morons walked around the woods at night banging logs against trees and screaming just to come up empty every single time. That is a solid point. Uh, the amount of resources spent to find Bigfoot has been ridiculous. We would have found hard evidence like bones or a body by now if it was around. Never say never. Joe, it's fucking fake news. Not so fast, Donnie. Although Bigfoot may be altogether unlikely, there was an animal that fits the description. And he helped Kobe get three rings. I'm talking about Gigantopithecus. It was the largest ape ever and could have stood 10 feet tall. The only problem is that it went extinct around 200,000 years ago. Illegibly. It was living alongside early humans and was probably hunted to extinction, along with habitat loss due to climate change. Now that's fake news. We didn't even burn coal back then. No way there was climate change. Dude, the climate changes in ways other than emissions. Whatever, Al Gore. So in conclusion, Bigfoot probably isn't real, but Gigantopithecus allows Bigfoot to enter B tier. Seems like more of an A tier to me. There's so much evidence. No chance, but by all means, everyone keep yelling into the woods to try and find them. Okay, up next is the Thunderbird. It's a mythological giant bird from native North and Central American culture that apparently shoots lightning or at least causes storms. There's a real life fucking Zapdos. Does this also canonize Firebird and Blizzard Bird? Guys, this isn't a fucking Pokemon. They also are not always depicted as a bird that shoots or causes lightning. Mostly it's cited as just a really large bird. I think I've seen this thing. He was huge and yellow. If you're talking about Big Bird from Sesame Street, then you need to be quiet. Wait, you saw him too? This particular legend isn't seen too much. But it's not out of the question that New Age Thunderbird sightings are just cases of mistaken identity. There are a few species of bird that get very large, like the condor or the golden eagle. I've seen some big-ass vultures when I'm golfing, too. I can see where some people would be mistaken. I saw a crow in a tree during a thunderstorm. Is that a thunderbird? Only if you believe. I do. 
Well, too bad. This thing's just a bunch of native mumbo-jumbo that evolved into people not knowing what kind of bird they're looking at. You can take a look at my bird. Although that may be true, at least there's a very likely explanation for the Thunderbird. If you saw a condor with a 10-foot wingspan, you might think you saw a mythical bird, too. So where do we rank it? I, I was thinking B tier as well, because there's giant ancient birds like Argentavis that could have easily started the legend. But I think we can go A tier, because it could just as easily be a known species that gets embellished into a monster. Sweet, what's next? Let's cover the classic. The lake monster. Now we're talking. What lake monster are you referring to, Donald? Like the Loch Ness monster? No, I said we should stick to North America, but there have definitely been stories like Nessie right here in the US. Well, if that's the case, then this will be an easy B tier since the Loch Ness monster is said to be based on the plesiosaurs. That's true, but not every lake monster is based off of the Loch Ness monster. In Oklahoma, there is said to be a freshwater octopus that pulls people under. Mm, that's pretty hot. It's not an anime, bro. This thing would just kill people and eat them. What a damn shame. It seems weird to clump all lake monsters together like this. Why? All lake monster lives matter. Why are you such a dickhead? I think we can cover all of the octopuses and noodle necks in one shot. There's also funny ones like the Beast of Busco, which was a legend of a giant snapping turtle back in the 1940s. That's a vibe. I think all are equally unlikely, but still possible. Some are more believable than others, but it's important not to dismiss something just because it sounds improbable or lacks enough evidence. There are plenty of well-known species today that used to be cryptids themselves. For instance, Komodo dragons used to be a laughable story. When the first man returned to the Western world after exploring Komodo Island, he told tales of the giant man-eating lizards that lived there, and every scientist laughed at him. Hell, more recently, the giant squid was no more than a mythical sea monster until the mid-2000s. Spit facts, Barack. Sure, but I've always thought that, so I was right first. So where do we place the lake monsters of America? I say we place them in the possible tier. They all have a Hail Mary chance to be true. Uh, I guess that's right. It's not like we can even point to an extinct ancestor for the majority of these crock of shit. Boo! Lake monsters are goaded. C tier it is. Okay, next we have the cousins of the lake monster, the sea serpent. Oh my god, these are so annoying. Morons see a rope in the water and it's immediately a life-changing encounter. I haven't seen any sea serpents. We finally found something on the list that Joe hasn't seen. I did see the World Serpent, though. You were watching me play God of War on an absurdly large amount of shrooms don't even front. You're probably right this time. I'm at D tier. There's not much interesting evidence. I'm with you on the evidence. But this could be another case of mistaken identity. Basking sharks appear in all locations where sea serpents are spotted, and they get absolutely giant. There's also the oarfish that totally fits the description of a serpent. Both creatures are serpentine, and live in deeper water, but occasionally come to the surface. If you didn't know what either of those creatures are, then you would probably think it was a sea serpent, too. So we can go A tier with them, too? That's a stretch. I agree, Joe. Now let's move on to a recently hyped creature, the uh, Megalodon. Solid movie, and the second one was even Megalier. Those films are garbage, and the Megalodon isn't real anymore. Shut up, Donald. Stop acting like you know what's in the ocean and what's not. There's definitely a huge shark down there somewhere, maybe in the Michelle Obama Trench. Dude, you mean the Mariana Trench? <laughs> What's so funny, Donald? I told him that joke and now he thinks it's the real name. Donald, you fucking prick. What jokes are you saying about my wife? Okay, since you asked nicely, here it is. What's the deepest, darkest, and fishiest place on our planet? <laughs> I'm gonna drone strike you someday and it'll be celebrated. Bro, it's just an extremely good joke. Chillax. So, do you think there's a giant shark out there? Barack? Do I think there's a large shark out there? Yeah. Do I think Megalodon exists somewhere on the planet? No way. Hey, you're no fun either. How do you even know? Because it's simple biology. A shark like that would prey heavily on mid-sized whales and large seals, and we simply don't see them in any habitat with food like that. Also, baby Megalodon would be even easier to find because they would be in very shallow waters, just like small great whites do today. We would have seen one by now, in all likelihood. 
Well, isn't there many sharks like a big, great white that could easily be mistaken for a meg, therefore making it an A-tier? Well, yeah. A 20-foot great white shark or an even bigger basking shark would certainly look like a megalodon from afar. But unlike the others, in A-tier, the megalodon is a specific species rather than a type of creature or a mysterious undocumented legend. Therefore, it should fall into B-tier because we know for certain that it's extinct. Why couldn't a meg live in the aforementioned trench where it could eat octopuses? Because it simply needs prevalence of a certain food in warmer waters, and everywhere that food could exist is heavily documented. It's just crazy to me that you can be so certain when 95% of the ocean is undiscovered. Bro, 99% of the ocean is absolutely fucking nothing. We've seen most of the cool parts. My point is, Megalodon would need to live in that very shallow 5% that we have discovered. It's extinct. This list has been a bummer so far. I'm living a lie. How about the Kraken? Kraken a cold one with the boys? Well, what are we talking about? A giant squid is kind of a kraken. A kraken is an octopus, not a squid billy. Dummy. He's got you this time, Don. Oh, sorry, I'm not a cephalopod, Stan. Giant octopuses could be real. They do live at the deepest parts of the ocean, just like the giant squids, and that would make finding them extremely difficult. There's plenty of legends of giant kraken attacking boats. It's pretty improbable that they would reach the sizes in the legends, though. The maximum size of the giant Pacific octopus is a more measured estimation, about 20 feet long at the most. If you add 10 feet to that, I would call it a kraken. That could barely destroy a John boat. It's pretty much the most likely cryptid on the list so far, but still just an A tier. I agree. Okay, what about the last of the sea cryptids on this list, the siren? Okay, this is a load of shit. Most of the hype surrounding these is from a few viral TikTok videos from this dude working on a boat in the dead of night and pretending to hear calls of the legendary siren to jump into the sea. It's a total fantasy, although very well done by the creator. Are you sure though, dude? The video was mad creepy. There's no way, bro. Sea people only exist in the Avatar and Black Panther sequels. What about all those explorers coming over here and said they saw beautiful mermaids in the water? Mermaids are not sirens, and they saw manatees. It's been wildly debunked. Women back then must have been so fucking ugly if those guys looked at a manatee and said, there's beautiful women in the water. That's fucked up. I'm putting them in fake news, most likely a fantasy from drunk sailors. There's more than a few of those. Good for me. What's next? Let's get back to the OGs on land. How about the chupacabra? This is my guy right here. Usually you're either a goat or a sucker, but this guy's a goat sucker. Not in the good way, though. This is a fun legend originating in Puerto Rico where it was reported that livestock were killed, mysteriously drained of their blood, and the legend spread up through Mexico and into the U.S. They aren't sending their best chupacabras either. There is sparse evidence of this creature, and eyewitness accounts vary heavily on what it looks like. Some describe it as a mostly hairless dog, and others say it's an escaped mutant created in a laboratory. I haven't heard many people saying they actually saw one of these. What are the sightings like? You don't hear about them as much because they pour right through the border, along with the rest of the illegals. I bet the rate of chupacabras entering this country illegally is at an all-time high. The vast majority of the sightings end up being dogs or coyotes in the advanced stages of mange. All concrete evidence, including bodies of this alleged creature, seem to be connected with canines and mange. So are they S-tier out here? Well, no. It's not like they're exactly as portrayed in the myth. They certainly wouldn't be vampires, but I can see how someone could embellish a creature such as a bald, mangy coyote, especially if it's desperate and looking for easy prey like livestock. Right, but to be fair, there wouldn't be a big difference between the chupacabra and a coyote with mange coming after you. Good point, but I, I still think it falls to C-tier for not being a goat sucker. Um, I do think there's a chance that it could be an escaped experiment with all those abilities. Agreed. Okay, and how about a beast known by many names? The Beast of Bray Road, the Rougarou Legend, and the Wolfman. We're seriously talking about werewolves? I'm Team Jacob. Like it or not, stories like this come from across the country. Even in the South, they have a Cajun werewolf. That sounds fucking delicious. This is completely bullshit. You'll find more evidence in the Salem witch trials. I'll have to agree. It's not like there's any evidence to go off of. 
Most of the legends have to do with curses and whatnot. Fake news. See, Donnie, I did it too. Great job, Joe. I only cringed a little. Next is another human hybrid, the Mothman. That thing is pretty spooky. And total bullshit. Uh, yeah, this is surrounding uh, a few sightings in, in the 60s around a particular bridge that fell down and killed almost 50 people. Multiple eyewitnesses saw the Mothman on the bridge before it went down. And of course, some believed the Mothman was the one who brought the bridge down. So a man-sized moth with Gandalf powers seems legit. It's sad that those people died on the bridge, but there's no evidence whatsoever besides stories that somehow match up. There's also no explanation. It's looked at as more of a superstitious bad omen that visited before the tragedy. Hocus Pocus and fake news. Those are great films. Hocus Pocus is goaded. No, it is not. We're still in September, boys. We can do a Halloween movie tier list next month. Thank you. Now put Mothman in fake news. Yep. This next one is a ton of fun. Back in the 70s, a story of a humanoid frog surfaced in Ohio. <laughs> what do we think of the Loveland frog? Only in Ohio. This is why all my homies hate Ohio. I'm pretty sure I saw this thing too. You saw Kermit the Frog as a heavy drug abuser. That's correct. All these human-animal hybrids are complete bullshit. Ironic since you look like orangutan man. You can't prove anything. What's the deal with the frog man? Was it just a French tourist? Turns out that this legend was a very large pet iguana that lost its tail. It was shot dead by police. Ooh, justice for Kermit. And the mystery is solved already? Wow, thrilling. Ohio drains the fun out of fucking everything. I'm tempted to make a tier lower than F called Ohio, but we'll just move on. Next up, we have the Dover Demon in Dover, Massachusetts. This episode of Lost Tapes is pretty spooky too. The legend behind it is pretty unproven with only three different eyewitness accounts to support its existence. Everything else is pure speculation. This thing is poorly drawn and was probably just a sickly animal if it was real. F tier. Wait, Donnie, it might be a funny fingered alien that got lost in West Bumfuck, Massachusetts. I guess, but I'm pressing X to doubt. Good point, Joe. We can go D tier with it. Let's move on to something similar, once known as a creepy pasta. We have the rake. Oh, I remember the days of creepy pastas before bed. This one was terrifying. So you went through an EMO phase? Probably. People are super stoked on this creature because of those stories. The eyewitness accounts are unreliable at best. The most compelling evidence we have is a bunch of random fake TikToks. That's pretty much the gist of modern day cryptozoology. So there's no way a homicidal malnourished bone white man with long nails could be crawling around out there. Joe, that sounds an awful lot like you. Are you the fucking rake? I, didn't, uh, I did get hit by a car while I was blacked out for an entire night on bath salts. I found myself naked in the woods the next day. Was there any blood? A shit ton. None of it was mine though, so we Gucci. Okay, I'm putting the rake in C tier because it's entirely possible that Joe is the rake. Very good, what's next? We have an American dragon. Was that the cartoon with the Asians? That shit slapped. I'm not talking about the cartoon, I'm talking about Snallygaster. That sounds like my new nickname for Donnie. I've never heard of a fucking dragon in America. Well, there are sightings all around the Appalachian Mountains. What type of dragon are we talking about? Are we seriously gonna discuss different types of dragon? Dragging these nuts across your chin. Eyewitness accounts are super inconsistent. What a surprise. Some people say it looks like a bird. Some people say it has tentacles or a bunch of eyes. You've piqued my interest. And other people say it looks like a dragon from medieval times. Is there absolutely anything to back this up? Not even a little. Any first-hand accounts, Joe? And I've seen some, but I'm waiting for the next season of House of the Dragon. Fake news, alternative facts. What about a similar creature known as the Jersey Devil? This one is fun, but just as fake as the dragon. I like his origin story though. The cursed 13th child turned goat demon escapes into the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. Uh, how is there not a horror movie about this yet? There was a few, they were all fucking horrible. What a shame. It seems that Lost Tapes had the best depiction once again. One of the best episodes, to be sure. As with the other superstitious curses and religious myths, this one seems like bullshit. Absolutely nothing can support this creature as evidence. Another F tier. I'm starting to think that none of these things are real. We got five more to go, let's see. How about people that live underground, the mole people? Oh yeah, I got briefed on these things, nasty business. Yeah, mole people are totally real, but it's just a bunch of bums living in sewers. Yeah, sure. There are regular people living underground, but this legend focuses more on 
people that have lived in caves or sewers for generations to the point where they are cosmetically different than a regular person. They've adapted to the mole life. South Park made a fucking episode about this. There are entire cities of people living under Las Vegas, and damn near half of them are mutated from the amount of raw sewage and mold down there. Like the things in the Descent films? Can you only remember terrible films? That's kind of an extreme, but I'm willing to accept that there are definitely some hills have eyes motherfuckers down there. I agree, mole people are S-tier. They're out there. Awesome. Now on to another trendy demon curse, the Skinwalker. From Native American legend to TikTok icon, the American dream. I've seen all sorts of TikTok videos of skinwalkers. Some of those dogs ain't real. Dogs make funny faces, dude. That doesn't mean they're cursed people. Skinwalkers are an interesting Navajo legend where apparently a vengeful shaman must sacrifice a loved one in order to curse themselves with enormous power. Is Thanos a skinwalker? I guess with the reality stone, he could be... Well, he didn't really shapeshift or run super fucking fast, so it doesn't seem like Thanos was a skinwalker. Well, it feels like there's too much evidence to say this one's fake. They got old stories and new TikToks to support them. I don't think that any of that evidence is worth a damn. Agreed. This folklore is more paranormal than possible. There's so much fake news in this video, I feel like I'm watching MSNBC. It's the speed powers more than the shape-shifting for me. I don't completely dismiss the supernatural, but it would completely change reality as we know it if they are real. The Flash must be a skinwalker. No, he's mentally unwell. There's a big difference. We should also mention another Native American horror, the Wendigo. I saw this movie, Antlers, not too far back about the Wendigo, and it wasn't half bad. Apparently, this is a curse based on greed, where someone becomes a monster with an insatiable appetite. If I'm the rake, then Donnie is definitely a fucking Wendigo. I will say that this is more likely than the Skinwalker. Still rather unlikely, but a skinny man in the woods who eats people isn't unthinkable. The legend says that it has more abilities than a common man. However, it apparently gets bigger with every meal, but no less hungry. Just like Donnie. Many depictions also show bones of different animals, but mainly the antlers of deer worn were attached to the monster's head. The legends say all sorts of weird stuff about all of these creatures. If there was a man that lived in the woods, wore antlers, and ate people, that's pretty much a Wendigo. Um, I don't think we can put the Wendigo in the high tiers just because people have been cannibals. Hannibal Lecter was not a Wendigo. I say we meet in the middle with possible tear. I guess I can agree on that. What about reptilians? I get asked about reptilians all the time. How could there possibly be reptiles that shapeshift into humans to control our society? It's total bullshit. Not a shred of evidence. Totally fake. Joe, you haven't really been against anything on this list, regardless of proof. You being so adamant that they're fake makes me think that they're actually real and you know something. There's no reptilians. You need to shut up right the fuck now. Bro, you're kind of freaking me out right now. Joe, are you asleep? Yes. No, you're fucking not. What is it with you and the lizards? Johnny, it's not safe. Maybe we should talk when there aren't certain people around. Joe, do you think I'm a lizard? Nobody's talking to you. Why don't you go eat a bug somewhere? Please put forward all evidence that Barack is a lizard person right now. He's on trial. Seriously? What have I ever done that's remotely reptile? Well, he suntans a lot, and I saw him eat chocolate ants. A lot of people lay in the sun. That's why they go to the beach. Just because you're too white to go in the sun or try new things doesn't mean everyone else is reptilian. How were the chocolate ants? They were mid. He isn't really sounding like a lizard, Joe. Well, what about that new Marvel show, Secret Invasion? What about it? That dude, Rhodey, was a lizard the whole time. So what? Black people could be lizards? Your words, not mine. Look, reptilians are either a fun folklore or the strings pulling us as a society. Which do you think is more accurate? Um, maybe they're interdimensional demons. I remember Alex Jones saying some shit on that. No, his thing was vampires. Why are they not on the list? Because the only vampires people talk about in America are emo kids. Facts? There is a shot that the reptilians could be aliens. Yeah, true. That makes them more likely than any of the F-tiers are. Maybe they can squeeze into D-tier. Fair enough. All right, guys, last one. Is it Batman? Batman is not real or a cryptid, Joe. Batman is real, we just don't know who he is. He's Bruce Wayne. See, if he's not real, then how did you know his secret identity? No, Joe, he's a fictional character. Batman has never been real. Even the place he lives, Gotham City, is not a real city. So you're gonna tell me that Gotham isn't real, but Ohio is? Unfortunately. The last cryptid we have is aliens. 
Oh, boy, the big one. I always thought it was all crazy people looking up at the sky, uh, saying they saw a, a UFO. It wasn't until I got into office that I saw everything. It's the first reality check you get after you're sworn in. Do you guys remember the first time you saw the VHS tape? It still gives me nightmares. Should we tell the people? Uh, what's the point of hiding it anymore? I started leaking it to the public in 2020. That first UFO mixtape was fired, but I'm the one who lifted the whole, if you talk about the aliens, we'll kill you rule. Now, the government people can talk to the public about it without fear. Don't you think it was a little sus that we went from, I don't know what these could be, to we have alien bodies and ships? I don't really think it was a good idea to tell them at all, but uh, I guess there's no going back. Aliens have been around potentially for longer than humans have, but there was a major shift in activity ever since we dropped the nukes on Japan. And ever since Biden took over, there's been record numbers of aliens. They're not bad folks, folks. I couldn't tell you, they wouldn't talk to me for long. <laughs> Don't worry, Donnie, they refused to talk to me either. They just kept saying, take me to your leader. Even the aliens know you aren't actually in charge. I'm glad that they are the way they are. They are clearly much more advanced and could kill us all at any moment. But instead, they have decided to study us and have only taken some precious metals from mines in the deep sea. What about all the alien abductions? They were just taking some samples. Bro, they were totally out here pegging people for fun. Okay, maybe there was some extracurricular activity, but it seems like they don't do it as much anymore. They probably took enough samples to make their own humans so they can do as much butt stuff as they want. Sure, they haven't been perfect, but I'd honestly much rather deal with them than talk to the other world leaders. The aliens have been everywhere too. Did you guys see Mexico has shown some of the bodies to the public? Uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Usually only human aliens are from Mexico. I gotta say, this is the fakest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, those look like paper mache. The dude presenting them hasn't been the most honest person either. They don't really look like ours. Are you gonna drop another alien update on the American people soon? Yeah, I think I'll have one more big release um, before my term is done. Do you think I should show them the ships first? Definitely start with the ships. If you showed everyone the tape, I think our society would topple overnight. That's an episode of Lost Tapes I don't think anyone would forget. So we're obviously putting aliens in S tier, right? For sure. They're barely encrypted anymore. More of a truth surrounded in secrecy. The top end stuff is a bit too much for us, but in time we will all know the full truth. Why do we even need to keep them a secret again? Because why the hell would people listen to the government if they knew aliens were out here offering help and we denied them? I nearly reversed that. Reagan was such a dumbass for telling them we could do it all on our own. I know, right? I really wanted to get my hands on some space lasers. I don't think uh, we're responsible enough for the technology that aliens can offer. Furthermore, I have full confidence in the ability of the U.S. government. Turn the teleprompter off, Joe. But if I don't read the lines, I don't get another ice cream. You've had like five today. Come on, Barack, you really counting my cones? He's not for the boys. Well, that's all the cryptids I have. Nice list, boys. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to watch out for my next alien mixtape. Shit's going to be fire. And if you have any first-hand encounters with um, a cryptid or Batman or Shaquille O'Neal, put your story in the comments and make these two bozos feel stupid. Until next time, folks. Bye, guys.